Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back in to bring you the 9.2 Discipline Priest Guide to get yourselves ready for Season 3 for Sepulchre of the First Ones Raid. We will be having a separate video for M+. And if you're watching this video from like months from now, make sure you check as we might have some more advanced videos once we have cleared the raid. Alright, so to get into it, make sure you watch and check along the video player because we're going to have chapters all spread out depending on what kind of information you're looking for. But for those who are brand new, welcome, of course, to playing Discipline Priest. I know there's probably a lot of Holy Priests out there who are being asked by their raid leaders and guild masters to go play Discipline, and this is where you would like to be to get started. Discipline, of course, is just loved and loved and loved in a raiding environment because of the massive amount of output they can put uh, over a minute and a half or 45 second period, as we'll talk a little bit about in this video. Their healing profile is just burst and overwhelming mechanics with tons and tons of healing throughput because there'll be a lot of times where players in a raid will be able to survive the unavoidable damage but they step in one puddle one void zone they get one extra debuff onto them and then they perish so being over to able to overwhelm certain mechanics with tons of throughput makes this incredibly incredibly desired in a raiding environment in addition to that they also are constantly doing passive damage which is excellent for a lot of damage checks and they bring Barrier, which is just massive cooldown reduction when you can get the old raid stacked up together. Some of the downsides, however, is you really need to plant your feet for a good 9-10 seconds as you are distributing the rest of your atonements as you're dealing damage. And it can really make it so that if you're getting targeted by certain mechanics, that can impact your ramp, your burst of healing that you're going to be putting out. You also are investing a lot of time and a lot of mana to be able to set up all of this throughput. So timing is very, very important. All of your healing is coming in these minute and a half or so burst windows. And so if you mistime it, if you mess it up, if you make certain mistakes, there goes all of your healing. So having a lot of discipline, no pun intended, with how you set up your throughput is extraordinarily important. There's also a lot of mobility in the Sepulcher Raid, which means your positioning is going to be even more important than ever making sure you can reach all of the targets in advance, making sure you can apply atonements to them in advance so that you can mark those players, like I said, with atonement and say, hey, whenever I start dealing damage, it's going to be healing everybody in the raid. Okay, when we get into covenants, not much has really changed for discipline since 9.1. So when we're walking into 9.2 and we walk in day one, heroic sepulcher of the first ones, you kind of just play the same. You're going to have... Uh, Kyrian, you are going to be playing with the standard setup we had for, from Sanctum. Kyrian with Pelagos, Soulbind. Some of the uh, conduits you want to go for are Courageous Ascension, which is the Covenant Soulbind, uh, Rabid Shadows, and Shining Radiance. Those are going to be your three standard sort of potency conduits. And you're going to get a nice bit of mastery whenever you activate your Boon of the Ascended. You get buffs for your Boon of the Ascended damage, and it's wonderful. When we do get into the double legendary sort of setup keep in mind that double legendary is whatever standard legendary that we were already using plus the covenant legendary is guaranteed so you're always going to have that covenant legendary on hand for kyrian it is spheres harmony it gives you a minute of cooldown reduction for boon of the ascended and for venthyr it is shadow word manipulation so whenever so how mind games works is whenever the afflicted target damages an enemy it'll instead heal that enemy. Whenever the afflicted target tries to heal, it'll instead damage either itself or whatever its target is. So there's a reversal component to it. So just a simple matter of a boss auto-attacking your tank will be enough to trigger this mind game's effect and then heal the tank for a small amount. With its Shadow Word Manipulation Legendary, whenever one of those effects triggers, usually it'll be the damage component as your boss is auto-attacking your tank. Once that triggers, it will immediately give you a stacking crit buff depending on how quickly that it triggers. So if it's just a standard boss that's auto-attacking, you should get a 9 stack buff of crit immediately, which is excellent. But one of the downsides you say is, oh, well, I already used my mind games, I already used this big power packing hit, and that's where our tier sets start coming into the picture. Our tier set bonus, well, the two set is extraordinarily disappointing, <laughs> to put it lightly. It gives you free shadow men's, uh, after you cast Shield or Shadowmend, it also stacks. So if you're casting multiple shields in a row for a Rapture Ramp, uh, you will be able to have these stacked buffs of Shadowmends. Uh, you can kind of expend them at the end of like a Rapture Ramp. A lot of times I ended up just stacking them up and then spending them on my tank 
uh, once my ramp was sort of over. Overall, it's not super impactful. It's a bit of mana saving, whatever. The four set, however, is the big kahuna. It forces Power of the Dark Side procs. Power of the Dark Side increases your penance damage by 50%. So instead of being a random proc every minute or so, it'll force a proc whenever Powered Radiance is cast. It'll also stack, so if you're casting back-to-back -back Radiances, you'll just have two charges of Power of the Dark Side. And the four set increases the effectiveness of Power of the Dark Side by another 45%. So you have your penance damage, guaranteeing a Power of the Dark Side proc, uh, a stronger Power of the Dark Side proc thanks to your Force set, and then you have a Crit Strike bonus from the Venthyr Legendary. We'll talk a little bit about the Penitent one when we start talking about the Legendary combos you could run, but suffice to say, you are going to be able to much, much, much more substantially buff the damage of a non-Covenant ability. So you'll have a simple setup of, I can now put out my Atonements, I can Schism, I can Mind Games, and then I can have some really, really punchy Penance damage to continue uh, putting out substantial output. If you're very fortunate and you only still have one legendary, but you have your your Kyrian setup or something like that, you could probably weave in that Penance in between Ascended Blasts. And we'll talk about that as we get into gameplay a little bit deeper. So set bonuses and double legendaries are gonna facilitate that shift though, more towards Venthyr than Kyrian. So Kyrian is gonna start us off with one legendary as we get double legendaries and as we get uh, our set bonuses, that'll mark the shift more towards Venthyr. So if you're very familiar with where the spec stands at the moment, that'll be really nice for you because you won't really have to change a lot and the gameplay is going to be very similar to what we're used to. Which legendaries are you going to be using, of course? For single legendaries, Disc is going to run Clarity of Mind with that Kyrian setup, same as how we're always used to. Um, you are able to refund legendaries, so while we're doing M+, and while we're doing Keys to gear up, you will be using Sphere's Harmony, and you can later sort of uh, refund that and make the Unity, the special effect, so the special legendary memory, a little bit later on down the line when we unlock it. For double legendary combinations, as I already mentioned, Shadow Word Manipulation will be played quite substantially uh, when you make that double legendary swap, and then you can either run Clarity of Mind or the Penitent one. So Clarity of Mind is going to give you additional atonement extensions with Evangelism, where you're applying shields during Rapture, you get plus six seconds of atonement duration to those Rapture shields. Which is great, because you could have like a Rapture and Evangelism combination, set up your Venthyr ramp, and you can go Schism into a Mind Games, into a Penance, and you would still have time for Penance to come off cooldown and still hit about 15 atonements, 15 people with that second Penance damage that still has the crit buff and everything, which is great. However, there are a couple different ways around that. The Penance at 1 Legendary is getting back into the conversation again, and I wanted to make sure I brought it up and some potential upsides and downsides to it. Once again, Atonement Duration, extra Atonement Duration is always wonderful. It gives you a wider window with which to put out your healing. Say you're just a little bit early onto a ramp and you don't have a perfect timing, you can sort of delay some of your damage if you know it's not going to do any healing whatsoever for that extra second or two so you can time it properly. We always want to perfectly time it, but sometimes, of course, mistakes happen. With the Penitent one, you have even more Penance damage, even more bursts that you can output, but your window becomes smaller and smaller and smaller with which to do all your healing because you're not getting the additional atonement durations out of Clarity of Mind. With that, there are some upsides. Some encounters like Anduin uh, have some extremely large healing requirement out of one of his mechanics, the Befouled Barrier, requiring players to stand inside. Half the healing will go to the player, and half of the healing will go into this barrier to shrink the size of it. So having very rapid atonements, very large burst healing, can make a substantial difference on dealing with this specific mechanic. There's also the added effect that half of the raid is going to be downstairs doing another mechanic at the time, so you need even more burst because you're hitting less players, which means it's okay if you have a little bit less atonement up time. So from my initial testing from PTR, I think the Penitent 1 and Shadow or Manipulation could be wonderful for an encounter like that, but for other fights where you're hitting the entirety of the raid, I'm a bit less convinced because it is so punchy and because you're not really needing some like three times powered revival. You you more frequently will sort of elongate or spread out your healing over the course of those additional atonement extensions. So that's where my initial 
idea, my initial implication is that as you're getting your legendaries together, I would recommend crafting the Penitent one to have it on hand, but I'm leaning more towards running a lot of Clarity of Mind for Venthyr progress sort of rating and setup. Some of the, the talents you want to be running with as we get ourselves into Sepulchre of the First Ones, whether you're running uh, with double legendary or single, you'll always be running with Schism, Feather, Solace, frequently, Shining Force, but the 35 tier is pretty open, Sins of the Many, uh, and Evangelism. For the 45 tier, uh, I've been running a lot of Divine Star for my Kyrian setup, but there's also more spread out encounters that are going to be going around. So I do believe that I'm going to be running a lot of Divine Star when I'm still playing with Kyrian. But I think when you're having a larger setup towards Venthyr, especially because Mind Games is a 45 second cooldown, similar to the 40 second cooldown out of Halo, there is additional incentive to hold that extra five seconds with your Halo, pair it up with your Mind Games, benefit from the additional crit strike bonus, the additional atonement damage that Halo is going to be able to net you, and further synergize with that double legendary setup. So watch for that as we make our double legendary swap. Okay, so we've been talking about our setup, we've been talking about ramping, but what actually is ramping? How do I actually do it? What's going on with it? Show me what spells I push. Let's talk about that. First and foremost, a Kyrian Boon of the Ascended ramp. There's going to be uh, two versions of this. There is a strong ramp, a Chad ramp with Boon of the Ascended, and then there is a weak ramp with Shadow Fiend. So you have two, two three minute cooldowns that you're alternating on one and a half minute basis. Nailed it. <laughs> With that, it's going to look a little something like this, where you're setting up, making sure that you are refreshing your Shadow Word Pain. First, you'll activate Rapture, which instantly applies one shield. You cast nine more after that, even though Rapture is going to fall off before all nine are applied. Follow it up with your Double Radiance into an Evangelism. Uh, with the change to the Instructor's Divine Bell Trinket, so you could possibly just macro that trinket in if you would like to be lazy. Uh, or you could, of course, cast it before the Radiances. Activate your boon, instantly cast an Ascended Blast. When you have Boon of the Ascended up, you never want to miss an Ascended Blast. They are priority number one. So you use Boon of the Ascended, Ascended Blast, Schism, Ascended Blast once again. And you can follow it up with your Divine Star or your Halo instead of one of the Novas. But again, you keep that Blast on cooldown. You should be able to net five Blasts out over the course of your ramp. And as the Boon of the Ascended ends, it puts out a massive explosion, doing lots of damage. Uh, which will convert into more Atonement healing, and then also puts out its healing on its own. This is incredibly, incredibly strong. It does a ridiculous amount of output, and this is the sort of uh, follow-up that you're going to be starting 9.2 with. You are, of course, also going to be having a secondary sort of Fiend and Avenge ramp that'll be going forward. We're not talking a lot about Spirit Shell in this video because it's unlikely that it'll be used for progress, but I might make a video later on if we get into more farm content where you will put out more, um, we will put out spirit shells, but it's probably going to be a farm thing. Okay, for our secondary ramp, you are, of course, going to be reapplying that dot before you get started. Starting it off once again with your Rapture, applying all those shields, Radiance into Shadow Fiend, into Radiance once again, and try to use that extra global in between your Radiance casts to pick your second Radiance target so that you're making sure you're always going to be hitting different groups of people. I like to cast my Radiances one on melee and then one on myself so I can kind of guarantee it's going to hit the full five targets and not have any sort of atonements wasted because the range is 30 yards. Once you hit your Evangelism, and again, you can kind of just bind your bell or your other unused trinket into Evange, depending on the timing. Schism into Solace, or sorry, Schism into Penance if you have your set bonus into Solace, Mind Blast, follow it up with lots of smites until all of your atonements are going to be falling off. Those are going to be the two sort of standard ramps that you're going into, and you want to make sure you set up about 18 seconds before damage actually comes out in order for you to properly time your incoming outputs there. As long as you're fitting in all of your damage spells into that ramp window, as long as they're fitting into the schism window, you should be just fine. And this, of course, relies very heavily upon the atonement extensions that Clarity of Mind is giving your shields, and then the additional atonement extension you're getting out of Evangelism, allowing you to just put up massive, massive amounts of output in a very specific, very narrow window in time. In between your ramps, you might ask, well, what am I supposed to do? One of the easiest ways that players end up going out of mana, out of, end up going oom, um, is they try to ramp and spot heal and do everything. That is not your job. 
you are not going to be taking all this time in between your ramps to go priority target heal everybody. Keep a Toman on your active tank or both tanks if they're both actively tanking something. Spot heal somebody if they're going to die to a mechanic. But otherwise, sit there and cast some smites. You saw us on cooldown. If you're getting your schism back in this Kyrian style ramp, you can burn one radiance, one schism, or you could hold on to both of those radiances for a particular mechanic. More often in Sanctum, I did end up using uh, a Radiance a Schism cast, a Radiance a Schism cast, and then it was time for me to begin with my next ramp cycle after that. So you have two Radiances in between, you should be able to net two Schisms in between, and overall, don't be burning through your mana. Your mana, the, most of your mana is going to be allocated very specifically into your burst window, and in between that, you need to trust your other healers to be able to do their jobs and provide the healing in between. Of course, like I said, Shadow Men somebody if they're going to die. Keep a Toman on that active tank, but otherwise the rest is not your job. It is not your priority. You set up every minute and a half, you blast healing, and then you go off into the sunset. Now, I mentioned some of the trinkets that are going on. At the time of this video, they nerfed Instructor's Divine Bell, which was our go-to trinket, making it a 15-second duration instead of a 9-second duration and adjusting the mastery to compensate. It is still a very good trinket. It still gives you a lot of stats. And this is a trinket that comes from the Kyrian mission table. So you can jump back and forth between Kyrian and another covenant to force uh, this trinket to drop for you. There's also another one, I think, that drops from the mission table called Flame of Battle, which is similar, minute 30 cooldown, as you can see the trend that we have going on. Uh, this trinket gives you a large amount of versatility. Similarly, has that intellect buff that you can get. Both of these are very good. And there's also a trinket from Sanctum of Domination, which has been making the rounds quite a bit, particularly in the double legendary conversation, which resets the cooldown of your penance. It's called Scrawled Word of Recall. And this drops from the nine, and this was just a terrible, terrible trinket for all of Sanctum. But since there's a possibility that your tier set bonus buffs penance, uh, the penitent one buffs penance, Mind Games Legendary buffs Penance, Schism buffs Penance. You can set up all these different things or some combination of those different buffs together. Set up all your Atonements, Schism, Mind Games, get your Crit buff, Penance, activate the Scrawled Word of Recall, Penance again. And that is going to be a very, very powerful setup that you'd be able to have at your disposal to be able to pump tons and tons of healing. With that, that is the single legendary combination that you have access to let's start talking about what we think is going to happen with double legendaries as i mentioned there's a lot of talk there's a lot of different theory crafts or spitballing that's going on for how you want to set it up with my testing on ptr here is what i did uh the venthyr sequence that i was usually going for was sticking to clarity or sorry clarity of mind with venthyr legendary and using rapture and evangelism together uh i do think there is potential if you wanted to have less than 20 atonements going out to split up rapture and evangelism but i didn't really like how it worked out in practice for my ptr testing so instead i stuck with this as follows setting up once again getting your dot rolling 10 shields from rapture and of course that last shield or two you could fill in with a shadow mend from your tier set bonus if you notice the proc double radiance into activating your trinket alongside with your evangelism Schism into Mind Games into Halo, as we mentioned, because of the 40-second cooldown aligning with Mind Games. Solace, Mind Blast, start smiting, and then you should be able to weave in a Penance to hit 15 Atonements with that second Power of the Dark Side buff and still have the Mind Games buff, and I believe still the Schism buff up to be able to put together one last really big punch of output as you need it. That's where I think... The ramp is going to be going, but of course, if you're watching this a couple months down the road, it is the 26th of February. If there's another video, I'll probably be putting it out to be able to provide some adjustments to that. Which means that if you're putting all your eggs, your rapture and evangelism into this one basket, you're also going to need to have a bit of a smaller ramp on hand. And so as I was mentioning, using one of those minute and a half trinkets like Divine Bell, like Flame of Battle, could be great. And then, depending on the ramp timers, of course, you could be able to access... Uh, that scrawled word of recall for a miniature ramp. Having something along the lines of, I don't know, three to five shields into double radiance, schism, mind games, penance, reset with recall, penance again, halo, and you're going to be able to capture 
12 to 13 people in a pretty beefy ramp, which could work out extremely well. As we mentioned with something like the Penitent one, I think that you're going to have even less Atonement application that'll be going on, and even more pressure to just set up a couple quick Atonements and start blasting uh, a Schism Mind Games into the Penance and hopefully get the Recall and ha hopefully have the Penitent one buffs. It gets a lot more complicated there. I do want to put a link in the description below for the Focused Will site because they've been doing a crazy amount of theorycraft for the spec, They're the best place for any discipline theorycraft out there, and they have a bunch of these different ramp sequences that they've been putting together each tier to start further laying those things out. So definitely make sure you give them a look. Big shout out to Reglitch and Small Priests for everything that they do for Dis Priests. It really is a phenomenal resource to have on hand for these setups. Okay, <laughs> now that we've talked about what do you want to be doing with your ramps, how the Kyrian ramp, how the Venthyr ramp, all of those things are going to be looking. I wanted to go over very quickly some of my initial impressions from the Sepulchre raid that would hopefully help you out. When we walk in on Heroic Week, my game plan is to spend almost every encounter, and we're going to stream, of course, if you want to check out our live stream, also linked in the description below. We are going to spend probably all of our time playing Discipline to get ourselves some more chops, some more practice, and get ourselves really prepared for what the next raid is going to be bringing us to help kind of perfect some of those ramp timers. That being said, there are a couple encounters which I think are going to be particularly punishing for Dis Priests the second that they really step in. Uh, some of them, I think, are first and foremost Lehuvim. Lehuvim is this uh, like robot fight where you need to be able to kill like wave upon wave of different ads that are going to be going out. And that fight seems very nasty, I'll say. It seems very, very nasty for uh, new players to walk in because you're kind of splitting the raid in half and it makes it a lot more difficult to organize a proper ramp. That was one fight I was kind of frustrated by on progress. Uh, another encounter like Skolex is ramping and increasing in damage, but the raid gets to decide when the damage stops. So having a conversation with your raid leader, your officers before you get into that fight as to when you want to be able to put together your setup is also going to be incredibly important. I think players that are getting their double legendaries and progressing later mythic fights are going to have a substantially easier time than those who are going in with only one with Kyrian. Uh, one of which, obviously, is the throughput gain. Duh. But the other one is Dora Shadows. There are so many halo effects, high movement effects that are going on throughout this raid where being able to use your Dora Shadows, vent your port to get around mechanics is bar none just ridiculously powerful. It's so helpful to be able to have on hand. So always be looking for those areas where you can use Dora Shadows to save yourself time, save yourself movement, save yourself extra damage taken, and be able to get around very easily. Uh, other notable fights, Prototype Pantheon and Halandris. There's a lot of movement and a lot of spread that happens throughout this encounter. So watching and being prepared for where players are going to go is going to be key for when you need to set up for your ramps. So that way you don't have three or four people out in the far reaches of Egypt that you can't reach and you're trying to set up your healing and then they come right back in as you're about to finish your atonement application and then you don't get atonements on them and your ramp is weaker as a result. That little bit of extra movement and preparation should help you quite a lot. Okay, Mythic Week is going to be on the 8th or 9th of March. If you guys uh, don't know, we are going to be streaming all of our progress, raiding 10, 12 hours a day, trying to clear the raid as quickly as we possibly can with my guild, Sonic's Imperative. So if you'd like to tune in, twitch.tv slash automaticjack. We'll have all the action for you, and I'll try to make sure I have as many guide updates as I can while we're progressing. But of course, if you have questions, hit me up on the live stream, hit me up on Discord, also linked in the description below, and we will get all that information for you out for the double legendary combos and all the other great stuff once, uh, once we have a chance, basically. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you all found this useful and helpful. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to keep an eye out for the 9-2 Holy Guide right around the corner. And I'll catch you all next time.